Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Spencer Wade on the line. He's founder and principal strategist over at Lyft Conversions. Spencer, welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be with you, Adam. Oh, man. So uh, I'm excited about today's uh, about today's topic, so building lifetime value. I mean, that's one of the things that your company specializes in, so uh, you're the guy I want on the line to talk about this. But before we get into that, I want to um, talk a little bit more about what you're doing over at List Conversions. Um, tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Excellent. Glad, uh, definitely glad to uh, be able to share this information. Uh, we're a full-service digital partner agency. Uh, started back in 2014 uh, after the financial collapse. I actually went back to school. Uh, most call it a midlife crisis. I call it reformatting uh, my direction. And basically, after coming out of college with a degree, I started Lyft Conversions. When I started the company, I started it with a different format. There were all these companies out there trying to be, you know, uh, all full service marketing agencies and we kind of wanted to be a niche so we primarily focused around paid search over the years we saw that most companies were losing their direction by hiring too many people in the process so we became mm. a full service agency we're a full service google partner microsoft agency uh primarily focused around paid but that bleeds into full service uh we really enjoy what we do we're very unique in 2016 i asked all my employees at the time uh, who had actually bought us uh, from a random sales call, and none of us could ever point to anything that we had bought from a random call. So in 2016, mm. my agency stopped making sales calls, and we converted to referral only. That means that we educate the public and focus on being the educators, and when you build a good foundation, kind of like you've done for yourself, Adam, uh, people have a sense to come to you. So today we're proud to say we haven't made a sales call since 2016. We focus on build, uh, building relationships and starting from the ground up, uh, and that's kind of uh, what put us to a full-service agency as of today. Man, I love it, and I love when something grows really organic and you're really listening to your client base and you're focused on adding value because if you weren't doing that, then you wouldn't be as successful as you are, and it, it just doesn't work. So I can always spot when somebody's really doing that or when somebody's kind of paying lip service to doing that. I mean, you can always tell. Um, but that being said, I do want to transition. Let's get into a lifetime value and building that. Where do you want to start with this one? Lifetime value can pretty much go in multiple directions. It's basically the core of my business. What do I mean by that? When you're a good business person and you do things right, people have a sense to want to work with you. And over the years of owning many different businesses, I've learned that by treating people fair and with respect, they have a tendency to follow you wherever you go. So I, after looking at years and years of understanding, like, how, why are these people continuing to follow me from a financial background all the way to marketing? And it just was based on value. Every time they came to the call, it was not sales. It was focused on education. Every time they came to the call and were confused on expenses or what they had paid for, we educated them and taught them to, you know, really understand what it is they're paying for. And it really it kind of develops this long-term play where people think you are a trusted partner. And I end every sales call with that. Whether we get your deal or not, we don't care. We just want to be your trusted partner. If someone calls you next week telling you they're selling you the Chicago River, wouldn't it be nice to have someone to call? Well, guess what? We've been that person, and we've been that person for years. And when we start to develop and really think that lifetime value out, it means at times you actually have to get rid of bad things. So we're a company that, you know, is very competent. If you can't walk, talk, count, and, you know, respond in a professional manner, then we have to focus on the companies that do. And that does not mean to leave, ever leave anybody on the wayside. It just means that you have to put your energy where the people are and where the people are is value. In marketing today, it's a, one of the highest payments that they receive outside of a mortgage payment. So imagine a typical business owner who pays a mortgage receives a payment for marketing that's three times what they pay in a mortgage. We always hiccup when we look at our mortgage statement. Imagine looking at a marketing statement. 
Well, if you prove ROI, explain customers the value of what you're bringing to the table, and then make them always understand that they're not tied to anything. We're a no-contract company, and I take pride in saying I feel like we started that. Years ago, everybody wanted to marry you into these contracts, and our focus was like uh, most people get married once and only want to do it once, so why would we put someone into this relationship that is almost saying it's an unknown factor and that veers away from value? So we said no contracts. If you don't like what we're doing, then you can leave us. And by building that type of relationship and reputation, it allowed us to really understand lifetime value and customer lifetime value is this. If you have 50 friends or peers in a network that have always taken your insight with trust and value, you can retire with those 50 people. Now look at any small business outline and you take 50 people into your pipeline, you can retire there. So that is primarily our focus. And I at times feel like I kind of go off on this, but lifetime value is the backbone to everything that we do. If you're not going to bring value to my business or my life, then I have to find someone that will. And it's quite refreshing when you find a company that says, we don't want to put you into a contract. We want to educate you first before you sign into anything that is going to take you to the next level. And by doing all of those steps, we feel that it comes back. And what do I mean by that uh, lifetime value? I have a client who's been doing business with me since I opened my first music and clothing store when I was 19 years old. Wow. Had a store, opened it up. Uh, the person came to do business with me. He was a vendor. Years later, to this day, I do his marketing and have do done the marketing for the, his business since I opened my company. Now, how would that person come all the way back from – 20 years of distance, value, you bring value. And then to kind of, you know, button it up a little bit, but value comes from both sides. You have to give to get. So that's why we are a no-nonsense agency. Most people might take this a little wrong, but we've let go of over 60 accounts since January. How many agencies let go of business that's paying them? None. We do. Why? Because if we don't feel we're bringing value to you or you're bringing value to the cause, then it's best that you find a, a different business structure that can get you to where you need to be and it allows us to not get bogged down on any unnecessary nonsense. And we found that to be very, very receptive by everybody involved. And I joke all the time, we have something in my company called Ugly Jerry. Learned it from a marketing event that I was at, and it basically is this. It's that when customers come to you and they shop you over and over again, you, we now have a saying that we tell them, you know, don't be, in a, don't be out of Jerry. And the first thing they say is, what does that mean? It means that if you come to me, we educate you, we do everything in our power to help you, and then you leave us because someone else sold you the river and come back to us in three months, understand that our pricing is now different. And what do we mean by that? We gave you all the tools to be successful three months ago. You went and bought the river. You realized that the river was not for sale and you're in a conundrum now. Now you come back to us saying, uh, you know, we bought the river. And so we tell people that, and that at first it kind of seems off-putting, but people actually like it because I'm honestly telling you, if you are shopping us, then you have the potential of a higher cost down the road. And so that's just something that we take pride in, and it's uh, been a topic of uh, several of my talks. And it's not something that I highlight, but it's just we all have to remember everyone has to come together for lifetime value to work. No, I love it. And one of the things that I noticed about, and, and it's kind of interesting because we have a pretty similar background. So being in finance at one point and now being more on the media or on your end on the marketing side, but me and me on the, on the media side. And it's interesting because, um, as you said, having clients that no matter how many businesses you start, no matter what you're doing is like, there will be people that follow you and that are your loyal clients no matter what. I have people that are, that are, that I've published and that are now working with me on different things on the podcast and wanting to launch shows that 
were my clients when I was an advisor years ago. And I'm like, I haven't managed money in a long time. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting to me because the whole thing is that they know where my heart's at. They know where what I'm trying to do. They know, uh, you know, I'm always honest and truthful. You know, I mean, to put it this way, for that first, that, to use your example, for that first client that you was doing business with you since you were 19, um, when, you, when you started your agency, he may have been your first couple of clients. Who knows? Um, he knew that, and he was okay with that. And he knew one thing. He knew Spencer was going to take care of me. He wasn't worried about you didn't have the most employees or the biggest shop or the best office. He knew Spencer is going to look out for me, and he's going to do the best work he can do. And that's what, and, I, and I like that. And he knew that you were going to yep. get better and better. He knew all these things, and you didn't have to put on a show. Um, all you had to do but, was give your of, word that you're doing what you do, and that's it. And, and that's one of the things that we talk about at the highlight into the calls with every customer. Uh, I know companies that ring a bell every time they make a sale. So imagine that. You're trying to be successful with your business today, and all of a sudden, someone calls you and sells you some package service. You mm -hmm. like the way the person talks, so you buy into it. Next thing you know, you hang up and think, my gosh, I've got this person that really cares about me and is going to take care of me. That person walks 10 feet away after hanging up and rings the bell so everybody in the office knows that they just closed the deal. We are not collecting checks. We sign them. Mm -hmm. So if you work with someone who's collecting a check, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're working with someone who's signing them, they have as much backing behind everything they're doing as the person that's writing the check to us. And we say that all the time. You can write checks or you can cash them. We're writing them, and that means that we're not just chasing you. Another good example. For the first several years of my company, every CEO, I actually went to a meeting and was instructed on how much money I should be delegating myself out of my monthly uh, intake. And the number was gaudy, but I took it. And then I, at six months into taking that money, I said, what the heck am I doing? I took the money and put it in an escrow account. Well, guess what? The, the economy collapsed a month ago, and I've got two years worth of payroll. Because I self-invested my fancy CEO paycheck back into my business, and so that's the unique thing about my company. We're not chasing paychecks. I don't have to make payroll or make a deal just to make payroll. And, sir, I manage over 600 vertical or uh, entities across the United States, and there's million-dollar businesses that are one month away from closing. God forbid something bad happens, and guess what? It just did. So that's another thing that I actually share with my clients to let them know I'm not, you know, I don't have six Mercedes. I'm reinvesting into this cause because this is something I'm going to retire with. This is not, I don't want, I've, just so you know, Adam, I've had six offers to buy my company. One was so big last year, my wife almost divorced me. Not really, but it was a <laughs> yeah. big number. And, yeah. and, and, and everybody's like, why is this guy not biting the line? Here's another good example. I have a rule in my company. If you, if you need a tool to do your job, get another job. Stuff breaks. You can't do your job with a pen and pencil or a pa uh, pa uh, you know, paper and pen, uh, uh, pen, then you might want to find something else because stuff breaks all the time. Well, here I am years into business. I don't rely on tools to tell me if my work is good. I go in and br uh, b reverse engineer and break it down. And so uh, here's a good example. Agencies right now that have relied wholeheartedly on tools and all of these necessary things to you know, show extra value are struggling major right now because the tools are struggling, the clients are struggling, and so now you're just paying for this third-party thing that's supposed to create magic. So not meaning to veer off, but it does tie back to lifetime value mm -hmm. you know you really have to keep a handle on your thing and you want to work with people that are on the up and up not someone that so, literally in 30 days time could be you know under so to speak so spencer um that being said first off i know we could talk about this all day long but um I, if somebody if somebody's if somebody's <laughs> listening if somebody's <laughs> listening to this and they want more information on lift conversion or to connect with you and your team i mean what's the best way for them to do that they can find us at uh, liftconversions.com, uh, definitely. Uh, like I said, we're a very unique company. We definitely answer every email within three hours, regardless if it's something uh, we're working on. So Lift Conversions. LinkedIn is a good network to kind of connect with because we can kind of talk before we take it to a web URL, which is based on sales and pitches and things like that. So LinkedIn, Spencer Wade on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, uh, but ultimately, uh, hopefully they'll come to your show and just uh, kind of 
find their way uh, where they need to be. And I'll, you know, highlight that uh, you've got an amazing uh, podcast going with enough data uh, to keep everybody very entertained and well-educated over these uh, coming weeks. Just wanted to highlight Awesome, that. man. Well, hey, Spencer, really appreciate it. And so thank you for coming on the show and talking more about how you've built lifetime value in your company and how others can consider building it in theirs. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. I mean, love to know what kind of things you're working on. And Spencer, thanks again for coming on the show.